How you doing folks? Mike Lawson, Lawson Outdoors. And today I'll be bringing you a review of the Ignite Black Ops 2 sniper rifle pellet gun. And this gun comes from Walmart. And it's the first gun, the first actual pellet gun that um, Ignite has made. And they did a good job. So today I'll be reviewing this pellet rifle. Um, I don't know if you know him, Nothing Fancy. He's a YouTuber. I want to be just like Nothing Fancy when I grow up. I'm a big fan of how he does his videos, how he uses talking points throughout his videos to stay on track with all of his reviews. And I'll be using that same kind of method during this review. All right, let's go over the talking points. Okay, a little bit about this weapon. Um, like I said, Ignite made this pellet rifle. And this is their first pellet rifle that they've made. And the first one that I've seen, I mean, if there's any other one out there, I don't know about it. But, you know, when you think about Ignite, I mean, people that are pellet gun enthusiasts, you know, they know the big names, the big name pellet rifle makers or the big name BB gun makers, Daisy, Crossman, Benjamin Sheridan, RWS, you know, it's countless other ones that people know about, but when you hear Ignite, you kind of like, what, who, who are they? Don't they make um, airsoft products? So, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of that kind of threw everybody for a loop when they saw this rifle in, in uh, Walmart, and it actually did me the same way. So when I saw the box, I thought it was a, a toy or something like that. I, I thought it had a, you know, how they have the red little um barrel thing on the end of the barrel that lets you know that it's a toy and not an actual rifle you know i thought it was a toy but you know it's it was actually a pellet gun and air rifle so here it is black ops 2 sniper rifle pellet gun okay this is a break barrel pellet gun and it shoots a thousand feet per second and it's one 0.177 caliber it has a spring piston uh, power system so you know this is a magnum springer you know it I I didn't weigh the um the um pull on the um brake barrel but you know it it's not too heavy for me you know but I I'm physically fit a kind of a medium sized a big guy so it's no problem for me but you know this is a magnum springer and it has recoil on it so get ready for that okay the um it has a fully adjustable um stock on it and as you can see the stock you can adjust the cheek well you can raise and lower it and you can adjust the um butt stock itself and the pad itself it can go up and down the stock the butt stock goes in and out and the uh, cheek pad goes up and down and that's awesome you know this is not any kind of flimsy kind of material this is actually a, a all composite stock on this rifle and it's not any kind of flimsy material it's hard composite i mean it's i don't know if it's polymer or not or some it's probably some kind of abs plastic but it's actually strong and sturdy it looks pretty i mean it it adds to the feel of the, the of the gun of the rifle it makes you feel like you're actually holding a sniper rifle so let me um go through the talking points okay philosophy of use pou i mean this is one thing that um nothing fancy loves to talk about and i've actually thought about this this um philosophy of use for this air rifle um the only thing I can say is you're not going to woods walk with this rifle because it weighs about 10 pounds, <laughs> 10 pounds with everything on it. Seeing that the, you have the um, bipod, you have the um, scope, you have all these, this composite stock. I mean, you're not going to woods walk with this rifle. So, you know, all this left is a plinker or, you know, Another philosophy of use for it is um, backyard 
what garden protector or pest slayer this gun this rifle actually shoots pretty good you know and that's about the only philosophies of use for it i mean one a plinker two you know a backyard pest sniper you set up somewhere just like a sniper and you know morning time early right before dawn and you you know pests that come to your garden or whatever you know to try to eat eat all of your um plants or something like that you just take them out you know that's an excellent philosophy of use for this rifle it's too heavy <laughs> to go woods walking with it you know and um let me skip back to some of the stats on this rifle it's 45 inches long with the butt stock um extended i have the butt stock all the what almost all the way fully extended out not really but i mean it has a few uh, millimeters left in there but about 45 inches long with the butt stock extended fully extended um the barrel itself is the 18 inch barrel so you see 18 inch barrel and then it has a muzzle brake not a, mu a muzzle brake on the end of it this is not a silencer people I've looked at so many um, uh, lackluster, I'm not trying to say garbage or anything, but I want to say garbage reviews that say this is a silencer. It, it is not a silencer, it's a muzzle brake. So it, you know, it looks like a silencer, but, you know, aesthetically it looks cool, but it's actually used to help you cock the rifle. So use it as a handle. Put your hand there and you, it helps you cock the rifle. Okay. It has a bipod, you see the bipod on there. And it adds to the sniper rifle look. You know, it kinda, it looks pretty, pretty badass. I mean, it, it just looks awesome. My neighbors, when I brought it out, <laughs> you know, they all of them ran over here to see what it was because they thought it was a real sniper rifle. And that, you know, that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of, um, things that you get from people they'll come running what what kind of rifle is that man man what is that i thought you was pulling out like a you know an ar-15 platform sniper rifle or something like that you know people are they are um very interested in seeing what the rifle is i mean and then when they find out it's a pellet gun they're like oh that's a, a pellet rifle what you know and then they pick it up man this thing is heavy you know it feels feels like a sniper rifle are you sure this is a pellet rifle and i tell them yes this is a pellet rifle but you know it's 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 a good design for the first air rifle that ignite has made so uh let's go back to the talking points um weight balance and feel like i said again this thing is this air rifle is 10 pounds i mean it's heavy so you know sniper as a sniper platform you know with the bipod you really don't care too much about weight but you know as a backyard plinker as a garden pest destroyer <laughs> i mean weight really doesn't come into the picture you know because you're bringing it to the range or wherever you shoot at and you're putting it on the bench and that's the only time you pick it up and the next time you pick it up you'll be taking it back to your car or taking it back to your closet to put it up I mean that's the the most carrying that you'll do with this rifle you're not gonna woods walk with this rifle it's too long and too heavy and you'll you'll realize it when you actually pick it up so weight balance and feel the um the balance of this rifle it's uh, it's composite with all metal internals this barrel this barrel is the thickest barrel that I've seen on a 177 caliber air rifle. It's the thickest barrel. This barrel is heavy duty on this rifle. You don't have to worry about over time bending this barrel through cocking the rifle. I mean, it, it's a, it's awesome. They didn't spare no expense on materials. They didn't skimp on materials on this rifle. The um, the muzzle brake, all metal, heavy duty i mean it it sits on the end of this barrel and they had to have a a real really thick barrel to compensate for the weight of this muzzle brake and it also kind of throws the balance of this rifle off it's kind of um you know 
more heavy in the front the front portion of the rifle you know and it, it's, it's just it kind of throws the balance of this rifle off but you know as you pick the rifle up and you kind of hold it in your hand it's a solid rifle i mean it's chunky stock you know it's it's a solid air rifle and you don't have to worry think oh man if i drop it it'll, will it break i mean it's it's solid you know you don't have to worry about that all metal internals look at the um the the chamber on this thing that that's that's all steel right there you see that's thick steel that uh, um where you insert the pellet at in the chamber. You don't have to worry about that um, bending to the side or anything like that. This this air rifle is put together and they didn't spare no expense on using metal inside of it. So, you know, another thing is um, weight balance and feel. The, um, the pistol grip is big and thick i mean it's i love it i have huge hands and my hands fit around this pistol grip just fine i mean it's it's awesome but it might be a problem for women or people with smaller hands i mean this is this pistol grip the rubber over it is real you know it's really soft it feels good it's got has to be rubber over plastic but hard plastic but it feels it feels nice i mean it's feels really good so you know the um when you lining up to take your shot i mean you don't have any for people with bigger hands they don't have any problem you know handling that pistol grip on there okay weight balance and feel it other than that it it feels like a like what it is it i mean it feels like an actual firearm an actual sniper rifle i mean it's all composite is not metal on the outside but you know it feels durable so let's move on down um ergonomics um the pistol grip was a part of that ergonomics you also have the um if you want to try to pick it up you know it's you know you have this um ribbing effect up here you know look that's kind of a little flimsy but you know that's probably the only flimsy part on this rifle it together it, it might need to be tightened up but they have rails for the bipod weaver style rails for the bipod and you can also mount ex accessories on here like lights um they have the um the long weaver style rail on the top and it's actually screwed in there but it's nothing flimsy i mean this this weaver rail doesn't move the scope on it doesn't move so it's actually a nice um a nice weaver rail uh the scope on here i forgot to mention the scope it's a 4 by 32 scope and it's decent i mean it when you look through the scope is it's crystal clear and it's decent for what it is but um um i'll get to that in accuracy okay the um ergonomics the adjustable um adjustable stock on there that makes this you know that adds value to this rifle because it's so much that you can do with this adjustable stock that is it's awesome i mean you can adjust it any kind of you know any kind of quirks you have about you know getting your cheek well you can adjust the cheek the um the level of the cheek piece you can adjust the um, buck stop the the pad of it i mean you you can adjust everything on the stock so you know you can make this rifle more comfortable for you to shoot and get it exactly tuned to how you want to shoot it um you know the um adjusting the um butt stop and adjusting the how far you want the scope to be placed on the scope mount you know you you can line everything up just how you would want to so ergonomically this rifle is 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 pretty good you know let me switch to the other side on the other side to add to the look and feel uh go back to uh weight balance and feel they have a um a, a bolt on here you know it's 
supposed supposed to um simulate a bolt right here and this right here cutout is supposed to simulate um the ejection port and you know it adds to the look and feel of the rifle and you, it, to make it aesthetically pleasing i mean it, it looks just like a sniper rifle and and that you know goes even more to the fact that people they want to know what it is what is it man what kind of rifle is that is that a sniper rifle what is it chambered in i mean what is it you know so you know that's a plus right there you know they they did a an outstanding job on the um look of this rifle because it looks like a sniper rifle and they didn't put too many um stamps on it you know they have the um you see the black ops 2 stamp right here and it's more like a kind of you know like a little stamp kind of stamp but they have black ops 2 on the scope itself and then have black ops on the side another little stamp and then they have it on the muzzle brake so it's not you know as you look at this rifle you kind of look past all the all the little um all the little labels and stuff like that so you can it's, it's they didn't put these put, um, too many um toy like labels and you know name you know stamping the name all over the the rifle itself it still looks um still looks pretty sleek looking okay ergonomics ergonomically for an, for a $148 rifle you're getting a lot of ergonomics i made three rails three re weaver rails on there and you know they have a simulated um a simulated um magazine well magazine and it's actually this cover comes off on the bottom bottom so you can store so you can store your um your actual allen wrenches to adjust the stock and adjust the um cheek piece on there so you know you might have to get down there and dremel it has a um the plastic a plastic um insert in the in between this magazine well you might have to get down and dremel that out so you can actually use that space for storage but other than that i mean ergonomics weight balance and feel the look of the rifle it looks outstanding you know it's heavy but has three weaver rails on there and they're not rickety or you know they're not coming off of the thing when you're trying to shoot it so you know it's it's pretty outstanding so durability leads me on the durability this thing is this um air rifle is durable i mean it's just like i said before it's stout you know it's solid if you drop it, it you know i wouldn't drop it nobody wants to drop their rifle or air rifle or whatever you don't want to drop your gun period but you know it it the composite stock on there seems like it will last forever i mean it's durable you know thick stock i can actually pick it up you know and all that picking it up from right here it doesn't seem like it'll break i don't know if i'm getting that on the camera you know this is 10 pounds but i'm kind of a big guy so picking it up like that you know it's heavy but it doesn't seem like it'll break you know just there's no creaking or nothing like that going on so it's pretty durable you know the stock on there the um you know you see the screws that hold it together but they're pretty they're not any skimpy small screws on there you see one screw right there right here is not nothing skimpy or anything like that it's not small baby screws or nothing like that so it seems like it's it's put together you know it's sturdy you don't have to worry about um breaking it or you don't have to worry about um bending the stock or anything like that it's it's really put together nice nicely so durability is is durable okay accuracy um one thing about the accuracy 
is that this scope that it comes with everybody knows that you know all of these um walmart gun walmart air rifles you know or cheap air rifles come with a cheap scope and this scope is, is actually pretty decent i mean it's clear you get a clear picture you know you can adjust it um it pretty much you know it doesn't hold its zero a lot you know it's hard if you get it to where you're hitting dead on you know it kind of holds it but after a while i think it loses its zero so the first thing that you would do with this air rifle is buy a scope you know replace the scope um you can get a leapers 3 to 9 by 40 or you can get a leapers uh 4 4 by 32 um by um 4 by 32 mil dot scope i mean these are cheap scopes that are actually really good scopes um the leapers uh 4 by 32 mil dot scope is around 39 dollars and that's an awesome scope you know uh leapers utgs um what three to nine three three to nine by um 40 ao scope with a, an adjustable objective and i mean you can replace this scope on this air rifle and and um really dial this air rifle in i mean another thing if you don't want to replace the scope you can get um <clears throat> lower scope rings and that's one thing that i think <clears throat> makes this um air rifle suffer is the high high um scope ring mounts you know why would you put a high mount on this air rifle and the scope is only a 32 you know 32 millimeter um objective or whatever i mean it's 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 no reason to have high scope high um high uh high mounted scope on here you know these high mounted scope rings actually make it harder to um to zero because if you're shooting anything over 30 yards i mean you're cranking these you know you're cranking these these clicks up in elevation you're cranking them up and then you know the next thing you know the um the little click wheel is coming out the top because you have to take it up so high because you know the scope is mounted too high you know if you look on look on reviews or look on videos on youtube about high mounted scopes and how they're harder to zero you know they're um limiting in the yardage that they'll shoot because when the when you actually fire any kind of rifle or gun that the trajectory of the bullet goes up and then comes down you know a high mounted scope it it um it's hard to hard to um hard to to um sight in the scope with the with the um high mount on there because the you know the the scope is playing against the trajectory of the round you know a scope that's lower mounted and you know lower to the weapon itself it's easier to um it's easier to adjust for that um a compensate for that um where the round is hitting because um the higher the scope is the more that you have to adjust it to bring it level with the um trajectory of the round but the lower the scope is you know to flush with the barrel the the less you have to bring that elevation up you know is you still have more elevation left on a lower mounted scope and that's one thing that i didn't understand why they put it you know why would they put a high mount scope rings on this scope with a small scope like this but um you know that's one thing this is a first air rifle and they still did an awesome job making it but you know word to the wise your black ops model three you know have a one that has a mid-size scope marine mount or you know even a low with this air rifle setup you know you want to be able to clear the muzzle brake you don't you don't want the muzzle breaking the field of view on your scope so you know go with some medium size mounts or something like that but break that plane down to where it's actually closer to the barrel so it will make adjusting the scope easier so i know this uh review is getting long but um we'll keep on going i ha I have some videos set up of the accuracy um accuracy is pretty outstanding you know seeing <laughs> seeing that um 
the trigger that you have to work with. Again, this is Ignite's um, first time, you know, making an air rifle, and this trigger um, leaves a lot to be exired, desired for. You know, it has, it's not a, uh, I've heard people saying that it, it's a two stage adjustable trigger, but I don't find any of that second stage whatsoever. I mean, to me, it's a one, uh, only one stage trigger. It only has one stage and that that is a long, long pull and then you get the shot. So it's not creepy or anything like that. It's, it's just a long take up on that trigger. So, you know, it can, if you look at the videos, if you look at the accuracy that people are getting, you know, you can work with this trigger and you can just get used to it. Train with it, keep shooting, shooting, shooting with it, and then you'll get better and better with this trigger. So, you know, it leaves a lot to, a lot to desire for. But um, the way I do it is this trigger, it actually, when you pull the trigger, it actually um, doesn't reset like the portion of the trigger that you pull. If I pull it and then let off, you know, that when I pull it again, it doesn't have any resistance until I get to that portion where I let off at. So I kind of pull up the slack, let off, breathe. Pull up the slack, let off, breathe. Pull up the slack until I know that the rifle will fire. Let off, breathe and then slowly study, squeeze through that shot, and then I take my shot. And that's how I shoot the air rifle. And, um, you know, it, it works <laughs> like that. In order to avoid that just long take up, a long pull that makes your finger tired, you know, kind of just take up the slack on that trigger, inch by inch, take it up, breathe, let off, take it up, breathe let off take it up okay i know that it's about this you know this trigger is about to break i let off breathe take slow steady pressure there's the shot that's how i shoot okay now we'll test the accuracy of this um the rifle uh we have a target set up at approximately 30 to 33 yards and about that philosophy of use i talked about you see we have the container garden over there and we have the garden, over, the actual garden over there, but we haven't done a video as of yet, but we'll get to it. Okay, um, we'll take five shots. I have a camera set up down there and we'll try to put rounds on target. See, I, I have to get up and cock it. You know what I was telling, um, trying to explain to uh, Ignite about putting a side cocking barrel or side cocking system on there so you won't have to get up. That would be excellent. Number two, and the pellets that I'm using today are the Crossman Premier Hollow Point, one, point, point one seven seven caliber pellets, and they are actually the best pellet to shoot out of this rifle. I haven't tested any other, any other pellets, but looking at the other videos, these are the, are the best pellets to use.
this is the fourth shot. This is the fifth and final shot. Also, you see them shooting on kind of an incline. I forgot to mention that these bipods are actually adjustable. If you screw this screw out, the, um, the bipod actually moves in and out um, approximately two and a half inches. So that's awesome in leveling the um, rifle as you're shooting on a non-flat surface. Last shot, we'll check out the other video on the camera that's down there close to the target. Okay, folks, if you see the video, <laughs> 33 yards is actually was starting out to be an awesome group <laughs> I dropped that last shot that fifth and final shot I dropped it and it was probably due to the fact that I didn't check this to make sure that the breach was closed after I set the rifle down so make sure the breach is closed guys because it'll throw your shots off but at 33 yards Okay, folks, now I set, um, I got a green giant can of French style green beans. My wife says if the can is dented, then it might kill you. So I didn't argue with her. So, you know, a person like, like me that loves to shoot, you know, I figured I'll just shoot it with my gun. So it didn't bother me at all. And what this is what we'll test out with the Black Ops. You heard about it, a thousand feet per second claim, and I actually, you know, provided you a link to, to prove that that was true. It was getting a thousand feet per second and even more. So we're going to try to shoot this can. And, you know, to me, it's the best simulation of impacting a small game target or something like that. You know, it being a can and then it actually has green beans inside of it. So something like entering the flesh of an animal. So we'll try to take this out at 33 yards. And I got my rifle set up up there. I had to switch cameras because the um, other camera didn't have that much memory on it. So we'll be trying to, let's see what it'll do. Hit it. Oh, green guts everywhere. Hit it kind of low. <laughs> you can see the it went straight through. <laughs> green beans leaking all out everywhere. So, <laughs> you know, that's a testament to the power of this air rifle that it went straight through the can. You know straight through the green beans I don't know if you can see that but it's green beans inside of there so good shot right there I actually it's hitting no it 
the sh the rifle is hitting low so i don't know if the scope if the zero on the scope changed but you know like i said that factory scope is all the way um adjusted out for this range i mean it has those high scope rings so you know the best thing for you to do is get an aftermarket scope a better scope but let's do another test okay people we saw what happened to a can of green beans a can of green beans at 33 yards i mean the power the power of this black ops 2 sniper rifle pellet gun it actually shot the can up in the air a full can of a full unopened can of green beans and as you see right now i have another can and this is actually a um, generic can of green beans and again it has a dent in it so a dent in it so i'm good to go to shoot it okay i have this can set up at um try to guess no not 33 yards no not 40 yards no not 50 yards no not 60 yards no not 70 yards yes 85 yards i have this can set up and if you can see i don't even know if you can see my my gun my uh, rifle set up and it's in the same exact spot it's so bright down there you can't even see it but we're off into the woods right here and this rifle has made this shot before i mean all kinds of crazy <laughs> i'll have to do all kinds of crazy kentucky windage on the scope to get it to actually hit the shot but as you can see my 10 back here is my backstop or back um back indicator where my shots have actually hit is riddled with holes and this is at 85 yards so um look at some of those groupings on there I don't, I don't know if you can see it but it's actually hitting and punching through at 85 yards a, a thin piece of um sheet metal thin, thin piece of, of tin or whatever so we'll see what kind of power you know that 1000 feet per second claim this air rifle is actually exceeding that we'll see what kind of power it has at 85 yards and <laughs> It might take me a couple of tries, but we're going to shoot this can at 85 yards. I mean, if you had a pretty decent scope, aftermarket scope, you can probably dial this shot in and hit it no problem with this air rifle. So let's see. Let me um, try to extend the legs on my stand. And, you know, I might have to speed this camp, speed this um, part of the video up in order to you know so you won't get bored with the misses but you know we'll try to hit this can and see the see the um results and i hope i don't hit my phone <laughs> my um i'm shooting this off of a android phone so i hope i don't hit the phone but you know that's the thing with experiments you might damage a few you know might damage some equipment but it's all for good fun and and good learning and education okay i might edit this out i might not Count. Wow, scraping all around. Ooh, finally, after I don't know how many shots, it was a lot. 
But look, you can see a pass through at 85 yards. 85 to 80, 85 yards. 80 to 85 yards. Pass through on a can. Whew, it took me a lot of shots, folks, but I finally dialed it in. I was hitting all over everywhere. I put that bucket up there so I could see where I was hitting at. And, oh my goodness. 85 yards pass through with the Black Ops 2 sniper rifle pellet gun. This is the probably would say the ultimate walmart springer ever just like i said before the best magnum springer that walmart ever had i mean it's it's an awesome air rifle this is a testament to its power with an with a better you know better scope a decent scope on there you can probably do this all day you know you can do this all day with a good scope on that air rifle and you know, why not stretch it out to 85, 100 yards? It's a freaking sniper rifle, for God's sakes. You know, sorry, Lord, for using the name in vain, but this is awesome. Pass through on a can. You know, it was a full can. It wasn't punctured or anything. I think I caught it on tape, on camera, so I'll play it back. But I can't stop saying enough about that Black Ops 2 sniper rifle pellet gun it's awesome you can get pretty decent accuracy out of this air rifle one other thing about shooting one thing that you need to look out for is the size of this muzzle brake actually um, affects sh shooting this rifle this uh, muzzle brake and barrel is so heavy that you see the the chamber right here is actually closed so it's closed right now but if i if i load this rifle and set it down and while i'm setting it down i just you know not letting it flop but let it just hit the ground a little bit you see what happens this um where you put the pellet in this um chamber opens and you don't want to shoot your air rifle like this you can mess up the seals that are in here you see the um the seals right here you can actually mess those up you can damage those seals from the pressure just blowing out those seals so this is an important thing that you need to watch out for before you get put your finger on the trigger pull up on the barrel to make sure that um that breach is closed you know pull up on the barrel because if you shoot if i set this rifle down and it kind of plops down a little bit you see that breach is is open a little bit right there and when you shoot the pressure is going to shoot out from right here and it's going to make a loud a loud sound it's, it'll sound just like a 22 rifle and you know something is wrong because the breach wasn't fully closed on the rifle you see so every time that you get ready to put your finger on the trigger check the breach and make sure it's actually closed you know that's that's an important thing to to know about this rifle is make sure the breach is closed before you actually before you take a shot you know that again that muzzle brake in that barrel is so heavy that you know every time you you'll do it i mean getting in getting into the groove of shooting this air rifle you will just put a pellet in i mean you just took a shot you probably hit a can at what 30 yards and you'll put another pellet in all excited to shoot it oh uh, okay Bow. put a pellet in plop it down and next thing you know the breach of the <laughs> of the rifle is open and then you take a shot not unknowingly and then hear a loud sound the next thing you know you damage your seals in here oh something is wrong with this air rifle no it's you know they should have compensated for that you know actually made it to where the barrel you know it, it's made it to where the breach actually um isn't affected by the weight of the muzzle brake but you know that's that's something that's also user error 
you know so you have to you know take the time and be responsible and make sure that your um, muzzle your um the breech is closed right here so that's an important thing about accuracy of this rifle you have to make sure this is closed don't plop the rifle down when you get ready to shoot it i mean uh, the scope the scope has high high ring mounts on there so you might want to get a new scope or change the ring mounts out you know um the ring mounts are actually pretty decent but they're high you know you have to adjust your uh, elevation settings way way high in order to try to hit paper so that's another thing but you know the trigger also is another thing the trigger is a straight one stage trigger so you know you can work with that trigger and train with it and you know you can use my method take up the slack in there let off take the slack up let off take the slack up until you know that the that, that the uh, trigger is about to break let off breathe and then your next slow study squeeze will be the shot so those things affect the accuracy of this air rifle um value an awesome value the value is awesome for 148 dollar air rifle this like i said this air rifle is put together i mean it's a brick house you know it's 10 pounds but you know they they didn't skimp on anything this is the first time ignite made an air rifle and the a thousand feet per second claims it actually reaches a thousand feet per second i don't have a um chronograph but i'll put a link in the, the um video to a guy his name is my air gun reviews and he did an awesome review i mean he had the um the um chronograph on there he he uh, clocked the feet per second and the en energy of this air rifle and they meet or exceed the claims of the um how much feet per second the rifle air rifle actually shoots so it says a thousand it shoots a thousand feet per second and a little more than that so that they've actually did an awesome job you know on this air rifle they didn't skimp on the materials you know on your next version ignite do not skimp on the materials don't listen to the 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 whiner saying oh this rifle is heavy it weighs 10 pounds you know that's a it's heavy but you know that's a good thing you know all the crybabies you know if they listen to them your next uh, black ops 3 will come out with flimsy you know plastic on there and you know uh, a thin barrel that that'll bend every time you cock it and you know you can't please everybody so you want it what you want to do is put forth a good quality pro product and that's what you have done ignite and I'll, I'll applaud you on that the first air rifle that you you know you've actually put out um 148 gets you an adjustable stock fully adjustable this thing is not like any kind of rickety material anything this is actually solid again i mean you see these uh, this is steel right here and you actually have the allen wrench screw on the top and on the bottom of this thing so it's steel i mean it's not going anywhere it, it'll last a long long time the sliding butt pad the sliding um butt pad on there the recoil pad it, it it's it's on there i mean it's using all metal screws and everything like that they didn't skimp on this rifle and that's the that's the beautiful thing about it they didn't skimp on it you know as far as your next version um ignite the black ops 3 if that's what you want to call it you know um kind of look at how rws makes their um side cocking um air rifles this air rifle would be outstanding in a side cocking version have you a fixed barrel on there you know have that same barrel but have it fixed to where you know a fixed barrel adds way more accuracy than a brake barrel would ever have i mean fixed barrels are are known for that accuracy you have a fixed barrel and then on this side you have a um ignite put a side lever cocking system on there you know look at the um rws rifles they have that side lever cocking system they're known for doing that to their air rifles but 
you know what that does is while I'm down here shooting you know you might have to make a rear breach or to where you can load the pellet back here or up there or in the middle or something but while I'm on target I can grab that lever and pull back load mill pellet in and put that lever back in position and then I can get back on target pap, take enough take take my shot and it'll add for a faster reload you know it's way better than having to get up from your position get this air rifle cock it put it back down now I drop my breech open you know now I gotta bring come up here pull the um the muzzle break and the barrel up make sure my breech is closed get back down here get back on target get back centered with my proper rest and all that stuff like that so you know it's harder so on your next air rifle ignite make a side cocking system i mean it, it would be outstanding you can actually make it 180 dollars and i think people will buy it make a side cocking system and that would enable you to not have to move so much and stay on target I make my shot, <laughs> cock the gun, put a pellet in there, put the lever back, and get back on target. I didn't move, you know, I didn't move my whole body an inch, you know, and that would be awesome, Ignite, if you would do that. But overall, awesome air rifle for $148. I mean, awesome air rifle. And... You know, frankly, it's the best air rifle that Walmart ever had on their shelves, period. I mean, I think it's, it's better than my um, Demon RS2 dual caliber, and I love that air rifle. I mean, it actually shoots 1,000 feet per second. It reaches its claims about the um, feet per second of this air rifle. So this makes for a 15, 15 to 16 pound air rifle. 15 to 16 pounds of energy out of this air rifle so you know you can any backyard pest rabbits squirrels up here we have groundhogs that like to munch on plants in our garden um possums 15 16 pounds of energy can take out a possum um it's one guy on youtube it's, it's kind of a crappy video it's only four seconds but he have he has a, a Ignite Black Ops sniper rifle with two dead raccoons in front of it. So raccoons, I mean, 15 to 16 pound energy is awesome out of this air rifle, $148. So, you know, um, awesome air rifle. I know this review is kind of long, but if you know nothing fancy, his reviews are all 40 minutes long. So... I've actually, you know, I feel kind of proud that, you know, I'm carrying on his legacy because I, I, I love nothing fancy. He's outstanding, and I'm, I would try to, I'm trying to join the TMP, TNP project, and, you know, I love his reviews, and I just, you know, give shouts out, to, out to him. I have his link of his videos in, in the description. He's an awesome guy, and what he's doing, I mean, is really awesome. I love his videos and not in not all of this stuff in a in a homo kind of way but he's awesome i mean <laughs> what here it is ignite black ops 2 and if you're wondering why i'm out here on the ground because it's a freaking sniper rifle I, it doesn't need a tabletop review it should be a a grass top review or you know a, a woods review because this is a freaking sniper rifle so that's why i'm out here in the grass i mean if you look at my um i'll have clips of the accuracy in here you know and if you look at the clip the clips i'm not shooting off of a bench i'm shooting off the grass because it's a sniper rifle you know sniper rifle <laughs> lost in outdoors i'm out